This is Kum Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Just talking of Everlast, is that an Everlast T-shirt you've got on there, Liam? It is me, yeah. You can't see, but it is, yeah. It's a nice T-shirt. <laughs> Just thought I'd drop that in. Drop it in, yeah. Nice How job. are you, first of all? Um, I'm good, I'm good. As can be. Well, you're not good, good, but we understand. Um, let's talk about the weekend, well, Friday night. Um, I'm assuming you've had a chance to, to watch the fight back once, twice, I don't know. But I will say before you say anything, there was, I would say there wasn't any person on my timeline, which is what I messaged you the other day, that didn't think that you didn't win that fight. So watching it back, what did you think? No, it was a bit Hector Coogan as it. We got out the ring, drug test, back to hotel. I got back to hotel at two in the morning. I was getting picked up at four in the morning, so literally ordered some food, up the room, packed the case, and had to be had to leave. When we got in the car, I had a quick flick through my phone, and what you've just said is what what I saw. Like, not one, and this is genuinely, you know, not one person, whether they liked me, whether they didn't like me, whether he was a fan, whether he was not a fan, I couldn't find one person to care about won that fight. So I thought, well, okay, what I feel other people feel also. And then I thought, I'm not going to comment too much because until I watch it back. So what I put out was what I felt. I felt I did not lose regardless. There was no way I lost that fight. And that was what I said first before watching it. And then I get home and watch it and there's no way I don't win that fight. Um, I think anywhere else in the world I get that decision. There's just... You know, I look back now and I just think, you know what? I was never, ever, ever getting it. They never even had a belt there for me to bring home. I was never, you know, I did not care enough out. I got disqualified for it and I'm on the way down or something. You know, beating a Russian on victory day or whatever it was. I just, I think it was all set. And I got I got sucked into believing a few of them saying, you know, you'll get a fair crack. And, you know, maybe didn't expect any favours after judges, but I thought the ref is in the public eye. I thought the ref was shocking. I thought the ref was like an amateur referee every time. I think he warned Kevin off seven times for holding, but then would turn round and say to me, like, stop wrestling or shut up or head up. Like, you know, I think he, he just took the attention off the fact he warned Kevin off seven times for holding. But obviously, if he only warned him for holding, then it becomes noticeable. Whereas he kept warning him and then turning and warning me for some strange something so silly, you know what I mean? And the more, you know, I watch the back again and there's just no way I can see Kevin off win six times, never mind seven. I mean, listen, unfortunately, this is not a new thing, but there is a stigma attached with whether you're going to Russia or out to America. But I will say also, foreign fighters coming over to fight in the UK, you know, yeah, they've got... Of course, I understand that, but I just, for me... That yeah. doesn't make it okay for me. That's no, absolutely the not. No, absolutely no, not. For me, I understand that, and there's been, you know, of late, there's been some bad scorecards, maybe not bad decisions, and there's been some bad scorecards. And as much as I feel, man was up a bad decision. There's one shocking scorecard, and yeah. I just think, you know, people say, well, if the knockdown was given in the first round, you win that fight. I still don't believe that, Coogan. I think. Obviously, the judges will know, you know, maybe going into round 10 and, and one point up. They'll give 11 and 12 against me. I think they'd have wangled it some way that they, 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 they didn't have me winning if the knockdown was scored, you know what I mean? And uh, I just, it's a tough pill to swallow, put it that way, because I think it's going to be a tough, a tough time maybe trying to get a rematch or what. Uh, talk to me about the knockdown that was deemed a slip by the ref. What, what, talk, talk me through that. It's a knockdown, Coogan, don't get me wrong. And I know we went was not hit, but it's a knockdown. It's you know, you get hit while your feet are in the wrong place and you're off balance. It's a knockdown. I know hundred percent he's not hit, but he's being punished for the mistake he's done with his feet. And that that you know, as an amateur, as a new kid walking in the gym, you're taught your feet, you're taught, you know, your feet don't go in a straight line and you know, you need, you, other, you're on a tightrope, we used to call it in the rotunda, and you, you're off balance, and he, he was off balance, but he got it with a left hook, you know, the replay's, the replay's plain to see, and um, you know, the, 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 the real boxing, it's a knockdown, again, I know he's not hurt, but 
he's being punished for making a mistake with his feet and that it should have been a knockdown one million percent. But like I said, with well, like you said rather, with uh, that given as a ten eight round to you, that kind of changes the complexion of the scorecards again. Yeah, but again, I, I, I still I still don't believe that. I think if they give that ten eight round to me, they would give seven eight nine to him. The rounds I went quite clearly. Uh, I know I just think these are one of the sun wires. Now when I sit and digest it, I think I was never ever getting a decision. Whereas before, and I thought, you know what, I win the fight, Andy, enough that they won't rob me. You know, obviously they might respect that I'm a former champion, and they might not rob me. But I, I, you know, I do feel they have. It's a bit of a catch twenty two situation for you because obviously. Ultimately, people saying that you won the fight and, you know, that kind of maybe gives you, makes you feel a little bit better, but it doesn't ultimately change anything whether everyone in the world believes that you won the fight. If you don't win the fight, it's not really going to change a lot, does it? I suppose that's how you feel. Yeah, you know, it's nice to see and it's nice to, it's nice to read, but it doesn't really soften the blow, you know what I mean, Coogan? I'm, I'm, at best, I know, four hours ago sideways, you know, I wanted to beat Kerbinov and then fight Tim Zhu because Castano was tied up, you know, number two in the rankings. And I should be, I should have beat Kerbinov and I should be fighting Tim Zhu in a final eliminator. Now, I, that's what I think has, you know, has kicked me in the teeth now. And, and, and I don't think that happens now. So hopefully I have to go sideways and, 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 and not backward because, you know, people, people, people know that was, that was not a defeat. And that's what I said, like, you know, I feel he's robbed the bank and got him not guilty. Um, as much as I don't think I boxed bad, I just think there's no way I can be any worse now. I've, I had 17 months out the ring, Coogan. I had 25 months since I made 154. You know, I had two fights after Eggington at 160 and 159. Um, and, you know, them taking them in, into consideration against somebody defensively good like Kevin, I feel I boxed well, you know, considering the 17 month out the ring. You know, people are people are complaining, Coogan, aren't they, with lockdown, you know, being rusty, inactive. Like, I, I had 17 months out of the ring, and when I watched the fight, I feel like I, I don't think I boxed too bad. But I also do know, give me a fight in three months' time, or give me a, a rematch in three, two months' time, you're getting a totally different fight of the game. Um, as I said to you uh, on the phone the other day, I suppose the best-case scenario for you now is people judge the performance as opposed to the result and give you another shot against whoever it is. We know you spoke about Tim Zhu, um, Jesse Vargas, etc. So hopefully you get something off the back of the performance that you put out in Russia. Yeah, you know, one of, one of, the, one of the three names mentioned, Tim Zhu, Jesse Vargas, or Kevin on matches is one that I want and it's one that I hope can be, can be forced somehow. You know, I think... That's what I thought. I win this fight. I'm in an unbelievable position again. I've got the Tim Zhu fight. And by all accounts, it, it was agreed for me to fight Vargas in the summer. You know, I, I, they, they were out of Jesse's mouth rather than mine. Um, and, you know, that's what's like getting to me a little bit now. I'm just, obviously, I'm wanting answers now. You know, we're only four or five days after the fight. I'm, I'm wanting answers now about what's next for me rather than leave me in my mind it's doing overtime a little bit um, have you been given any indication about what could be next for you I know it's only been a few days <clears throat> no you know I, I spoke with my manager and you know he's kind of begged me to try to switch off you know spend time with my family I've been away from my family for a little bit and see, I've, got a, I've got a little girl and you know, I've got another one on the way you know, my missus is pregnant again so um, you know he's I beg me to try and switch off for a week, but also knows it's going to be hard because my mind's doing overtime about what's next. So, you know, he, he, for him to speak to Eddie and to speak to him, I know Eddie was busy with the Billy Joe fight, you know, so Eddie had a busy weekend himself. So, you know, he probably thinks, let Eddie get his busy weekend out the way. And, you know, I'm sure he'll be on Eddie this week and see what what Eddie feels, you know what I mean? What, Ed, what Eddie thinks, I'm not sure whether Eddie's watch the fight or whether Eddie's read up on it, but you know, I think um I think he should do because I, again I don't I can't not one person says to me Kevin I've wins that fight. Not even says to me, not one person 
not one reporter, not one scorecard, not one person who scored the fight. Um, you know, things came and I won that fight. Yeah, like I said to you, um, the timeline I was looking at, exactly the same. So I didn't see anyone that didn't think that you... It was a close fight. You can you can call it a close fight, but a fight that... A close yeah, fight. Of course, I'm not... I'm not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, it was a, it was a stinker. It was the worst decision in the world because it was a good fight also. You know, it was, a, it was a good competitive fight and it was a good fight to watch. And that's what I'm happy with also. People are saying, you know, people are saying it was a great fight and it, it, it didn't half catch fire towards the end. But again, I still think there was, there was only, there was only one winner. And, you know, by all accounts, everything we've read and seen, there was only one winner. Well, like I said, we hope that the performance alone does lead you to one of them two fights you want or, or, or the rematch. But I suppose four days in, you're eager. You want to know what's going on. But like I said, there's probably a lot of other stuff going in boxing, kind of making you go on a little bit of a, a roundabout, waiting your turn at the minute. Yeah, of course. But, you know, I've, just, I've seen, you know, hopefully I can you know, be out August, September. You know, I think... Um, hopefully get on the Fiori Joshua card in August. Just chuck your name in there. Everyone else has. Yeah. Why not? Me and Vargas or me and Kevin off. No, but I just hope now I can be I can be out quick. I can say I had a, a long time out there in there. Seventeen months was a long time, and um, I just think put me back in. I know we'll have the pandemic to deal with, but you know we're, it seems to be passing it now, and hopefully I'll be out quite quick. Well, I will be talking to Mr. Eddie Hearn uh, at some point this week, hopefully tomorrow. So I will ask him about, yeah, your situation and your fight with Kerbin off and we'll see what he has to say. Nice on me, thanks. Um, just finally, Liam, just a reflection on Billy Joe Saunders' loss to Canelo. Uh, obviously, we all know someone that you've shared the ring with. Uh, what, what was your uh, kind of reflection on, on the win for Canelo? Um... Just he's ruthless. He's, he's brutal. Um, and I thought Billy Joe was boxing well in parts. I thought Canelo was was ahead, but Billy Joe was doing well a lot at making Canelo miss. Obviously, I know Canelo was landing shots also, but I think Billy Joe was doing well, staying out of trouble and pot shot on Canelo. Um, you know, I think I think I gave Billy Joe two and I gave one one even. Uh, I think I'd fight five two one even. Um, but I just think, I just think if you look at Canelo's body language, he always just looks in control. You know what I mean, and that's what sways. That's why I can see judges had them, had them ahead on all three cards. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's just like a matter of time. But he tried that shot, so you can't. I, I said with Callum Coon, you can't really say it's unfortunate with the injury because Canelo tried that shot a hundred times. You know, punching the arm, and you can't really say the injury with Billy Joe was. Unfortunate because he was very close with that uppercut a couple of times, and you could tell it was a shot he he's worked on. And I just I said after my own fight, I said after Callum's fight, I said after Billy Joe's fight, I just think you know he's that good. Sometimes you've got to take your hat off to him. Yeah, look, it was um, I suppose. Listen, he's before he was regarded as kind of um, everyone's or a lot of people's pound for pound number one. He kind of in full step point the other day that we are talking about someone who is um, quickly becoming, or if he's not already a modern day great in Canelo. Yeah, he's pound for pound number one for me by, you know, by a long stretch. Just achievements, caliber of fighters he's beat, and um, what he's what he's you know trying to do, you know, being as active as he, as he's been with, like the the stature he is. You know, like, like you look back to when Mayweather was him fighting twice a year on the two big dates. He's fighting 70 days apart and by all accounts, he wants to fight quite quick again now. So you have to just take your hat off to him. It's very hard and there's all that saying, the silk pyjamas and the whatever else, but he's got multi, multi, multi millions in the bank and is still just finishing fights back in the gym, finishing fights back in the gym. You have to just applaud people like that because it's very tough to do. He deserves everything he's getting, to be fair to him. Okay, and I'm loving watching him speak English as well. Oh, it's brilliant. Got me glued. To, it just got me glued when he speaks English. He's fucking brilliant. Get the fuck out of here, motherfucker! Brilliant. Payday, payday.
Lee. Brilliant. Oh my God, it's brilliant. Liam, appreciate your time. Um, yeah, like I said, hope uh, hope you do get something off the back of the performance as opposed to the result. And uh, like I said, I'll um, I'll be talking to Eddie Hearn about this tomorrow and seeing what he says about that situation as well. So, thanks, Ron Coogan. Thanks, mate. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Catch you soon, mate. Thank you me. in the bubble, are you? What's that? You in the bubble, there, fight week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. In the hotel room, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Liam Smith. Bye, mate.